Welcome to That's Good Broncos. I am Brandon Perna. This is your Broncos versus Tampon Bay prediction episode. I'm 3-0 and in my predictions, and this week I'll evaluate the position groups, award the better a point, tally those points, and predict a winner by the end of the episode. Can Trevor Simeon follow up his hot fourth quarter with a hot first quarter, a hot second quarter, a lukewarm third quarter, and a hot fourth quarter again? Uh, let me know your predictions in the comments so I can ignore them. That's Good Broncos. First question on your mind is, is this a trap game? No, this is a trap game. Second question on your mind, did I have cocaine pancakes for breakfast? No, I hopped up, stopped selling them. But I do love cocaine pancakes. Third question, any more wordplay today? You better hope not. This game is in Tampa Bay. Boom, half point advantage for the Buccaneers. They don't get the half point because of their super loyal fan base, but because it's going to be hot, muggy, and more sweaty than the inside of Gerald McCoy's jockstrap. The story here is the progression of two young, talented quarterbacks, and I'm willing to bet whichever one makes fewer mistakes will come out on top and be crowned the football glory hole winner of the day. Gary Kubiak versus Lovey Smith, I, I mean Dirk Cotter, right away. Half point here for Gary Kubiak. Sorry, Cotter. Kubiak's 3-0. Cotter is 1-3 with a quarterback that's thrown twice as many picks with a year more of experience than Kubiak's guy. Winston has a 60.6 completion percentage, eight touchdowns, six picks, and a QBR of 73.61. Simeon's at 67% completion, five touchdowns, three interceptions, a QBR of 78.27, so he's slightly better. The Buccaneers defense is giving up more points per game than any other team in the NFL with 33.7 and I blame the coach. He should be out there playing too. Yes, that's even worse than the Saints defense. Dick Cotter, I'm, I'm talking to you man. The only way you will succeed in the NFL is if you hire Jim Bob Cooter from Detroit. Cotter Cooter, 2017. Hell, if you run for president, I'll fucking vote for you. Trevor Simeon in ball catchers versus Tampa secondary. Pro Football Focus has the Tampa secondary graded out low, as you can see here. Pro Football Focus also thinks Bradley Roby and TJ Ward are terrible at their jobs. So I'm losing confidence in their grading system every damn week. I will say I think the Tampa secondary has more holes in it than the movie Holes. They rank 13th against the pass, giving up 272 yards per game, but the issue for them is the seven touchdowns they've given up through the air. As a comparison, the Broncos have given up two passing touchdowns this season. Brent Grimes is their best player in the secondary, and he's not nearly as intimidating as his wife, Miko Grimes, is on Twitter. She seems like a real peach. Opposite of him is corner Flowers for Altranon Werner uh, and rookie Vernon Hargraves. I think Hargraves can be a good corner in the NFL, but his inexperience should be exploited by the crafty Emmanuel Sanders. And with three corners listed at 5'10", I have to believe Demarius Targaryen poses a nightmare-like matchup for all of them. Neither safety Bradley McDougal than Chris Conti have been great in coverage situations this season. Their linebackers, Levante David and Quan Alexander, have been good, which means if Virgil Green still isn't healthy, which he isn't, I don't think he's playing, uh, it might be a quiet day for tight ends. I'm giving the Broncos quarterback and receivers a half point advantage here. I'm riding the Simeon bandwagon because like John Elway, I believe he's earning respect as a leader. Leadership is not given, leadership is earned. Uh, it's earned through respect. It's, uh, it's not something that when I'm the quarterback, I'm automatically gonna be given that leadership and that respect that when I say, let's go, they're gonna listen to me. It's, it's earned. And I believe he can continue where he left off against Cincinnati with a near perfect fourth quarter. His inexperience still makes me believe he could be streaky at times, and with the Tampa team backed in the corner, anything can happen. But with a defense that has one pick on the season, I don't expect it. 
Jameis Winston and the ball catchers versus Bronco secondary. This is my key matchup of the game. Jameis has great weapons around him. Mike Evans is a beast of a receiver. Vincent Jackson is still good. And the Wes Welker clone, Adam Humphreys, is averaging just over 11 yards per catch is an increasing, and is increasing his receptions and yards and levels of three every week. Based on this trajectory, he'll have 12 catches for 132 yards and maybe finally a touchdown. <laughs> Having a hard time finding the end zone, Humphreys? The thing you need to know about Winston and these receivers, including tight end Cameron, don't pump the brates, is that these guys attack the field deep. They also apparently have fucking Spider-Man playing tight end. They will try and stretch this secondary, and they've had success doing that this season. I really think this is a strength of the team, but Winston has thrown six interceptions and only notched one victory. The most comparable secondary they faced is the Cardinals, and Arizona held Tampa to seven points. Jameis is going to take chances, but I'm confident the Broncos secondary is up to the challenge. Winston is not a bad quarterback, but he's still the worst quarterback the Broncos have faced since they played Kyle Wharton week 14 of 2014. Akib Tlaib will have to play his ass off against Mike Evans, and he just might want to remind Tampa that letting him go was the worst decision they ever made. Harris is facing the best slot receiver thus far in 2016 in Adam Humphreys, but if they can shut down Dalton, Luck, and Newton, I have to give this secondary a .5 advantage. My word of warning is, if the secondary struggles, it's because Winston will extend plays, which is tough no matter how great your secondary is. Broncos running backs and offensive line versus Tampa's front seven. I'm not overly concerned about Tampa's front seven. Defensive tackle Gerald McCoy is, he could, he could be a problem. He will need to be accounted for at all times, but if he's double teamed by uh, Matt Paradis and Schofield, I think the Broncos can keep him relatively in check. I'm not saying the rest of the guys along that line are terrible, but if the names William Golston, Clinton McDonald, and Noah Spence don't scare you, it's because they're not dominating opposing offenses. This team only has five sacks on the season. Von Miller alone has five sacks. Robert Ayers, who is a force on that D-line, is dealing with an ankle injury, and I don't think he's going to play. This group allowed 98 rushing yards per game, which isn't bad, and that decent stat can be attributed to their three linebackers, Levante, David, Quan Alexander, and Daryl Smith. They've played well, and the Broncos struggled last week to get C.J. Anderson past the first line of attack. I believe the Broncos improving O-line will open up holes for CJ, Devontae, and please God, Andy Manovich. But the test will be for CJ, as he's going to have to bounce back and find ways to beat the Bucks linebackers when this O-line does make room for him against a subpar defensive line. The Broncos, due to inconsistency and the ongoing in injury to Donald Stevenson, only get a... 0.25 advantage here. The run game has declined each week, and Ty Sam Brylo played his first game in nearly a year last week. They still have a lot to prove in this area. Tampa's running backs and offensive line versus Broncos. Uh, front seven. Von Miller is the defensive player of the month, and if he stays healthy, has a real chance to finish the season as the defensive MVP. We know Miller's going to do his thing, but I expect another big game from Shane Ray. The left side of this Tampa offensive line is the shitty side. Left tackle Donovan Smith wishes he was Donovan McNabb and left guard Kevin Pamphiel will never feel Pam. The right side of the line is decent, a lot like Denver's side, but with better play at tackle for the moment. Doug Martin, or as his teammates call him, Hamster Nuts, if healthy, would be a concern, but he's not. Charles Sims is no slouch as the number two back and can make plays in the passing game. He's got one receiving touchdown and 105 receiving yards on the season, but this team is averaging only 86 rushing yards per game. The Broncos front seven got owned last week in the first quarter and are currently giving up the sixth most rushing yards per game at 127.7. I believe this front seven will bring pressure and force Winston into some bad throws or sacks. However, the weakness right now is against the run. So as motivation, I'm giving Tampa Bay 
half point advantage here. I wanna see more from Derek Wolf, the ruthless predator who sunk his fangs into runners all last season. And less of Derek Wolf, the intellectual, cuddly Aquila from the Jungle Book. Wolf, who gets thrown off a cliff by Sheer Khan like a little bitch. Aquila! <laughs> Sylvester Williams, Jared Crick, Brandon Marshall, and Todd Davis need to play better. And maybe this half point given to Tampa will motivate them because I know they watched this episode on the plane on the way to the games. Special teams versus uh, special teams. This game is close. This could be the most important matchup we have. Brandon McManus is five of six on the season, but has yet to tap the gooch from 50 yards out. The Buccaneers drafted a kicker, Roberto Agallo, in the second round of the draft. But he has only made one of his three attempts this season, and that was week one. One of three ain't gonna cut it. Half point for the Broncos. However, the Twilight Zone first premiered on October 2nd, 1959 on CBS. This game will air on CBS, so be ready for some weird shit to happen Sunday. And your final point tally is... One point Bucks and 2.25 Broncos. The Broncos are heavy favorites according to my patent pending point system, but I learned last year to never predict blowouts. It's bad luck. And I think Tampa may play better than they have thus far in 2016. I will also say this could be the first complete game the Broncos put together in all phases because they have more talent in almost all of the positional matchups. I also believe CJ Anderson and Von Miller need to do this dance at the beginning of each quarter instead of just at the beginning of the game. Thanks Ren Culp for posting that on Reddit if they do that. This will go down as the greatest team in NFL history. Broncos win this one 33 to 16. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Make sure you subscribe here to my YouTube channel. Give me a follow on Twitter. Jesus Christ, follow me on fucking Twitter and tweet me some stuff. Make sure you check out all of your Denver sports news at bsndenver.com and check out the world's biggest Broncos blog, Mile High Report. Unless you're watching this on the Mile High Report, then check out my YouTube channel. That's how we do it here.